Hey everybody, welcome to day five of the Ikoria Layer of Behemoth set review on the Mana Leak. I'm John, as always, and today we're going to be looking at the final mono-colored set of cards. We're going to be looking at all the green cards from a limited perspective, talking draft and talking sealed. I believe I had said that the next review was going to be all of the rest of the cards. I'm actually going to split that up. I'm going to do all of the non-hybrid gold cards tomorrow, and then the following day will be all of the hybrid cards, the colorless cards, the artifact cards, and the land cards. It will probably be slightly shorter, but that saves it from being a gigantic over double length episode. So uh, be prepared for that. But we're going to get started with Adventurous Impulse. Yep, Adventurous Impulse is back from Dominaria, a single green mana for a sorcery at common. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This card is the card that made me kind of start to like these cards in green. It is just a single green mana. It is such a nice turn one play to do this. It helps fix some sketchier hands. It's just okay. It's not good. It's not good by any stretch of the imagination. If you have 23 better cards, you will play those 23 better cards and you will not play this one. But if you need an extra playable, this one's not too bad. It's kind of in the C range though at best. Up next is Almighty Brushwag. Almighty Brushwag is a single green mana for a creature Brushwag at common. It's a 1-1 one, one with Trample. Yeah, it's a 1-1 one, one with Trample, but you can pay 3 and a green to give Almighty Brushwag plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. Hey, if you have 8 mana, plus 6 plus 6. Yeah, this is a, a very good mutate platform. Comes down on turn one, which means all of those cheaper mutate cards are getting ramped out. And uh, those cheaper mutate cards that are probably already a little bit bigger than they should be for their mutate cost can be even bigger if you pump four mana into them when you have a chance, giving them plus three, plus three. Brushwag is built to mutate. If you are not mutating Brushwag, it is fine, but probably a very long time before you're actually attacking with it and uh, pumping it to make it a 4-4. So if that's your plan, this card's probably not worth including. But if you are in a heavy mutate deck, this definitely goes up to like the strong C plus range. I don't think it goes any higher. Your mutate creatures are much more important than this creature is, but it is still a nice to have. So C plus for Brushwag in the mutate deck. Up next is a card that I'm afraid of, Auspicious Starix. Auspicious Starix is five, four and a green for a creature Elk Beast at Uncommon. It's a 6-6 six, six for five. That's right, a 6-6 six, six for five. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Put those permanent cards straight onto the battlefield. This scares me because it is the epitome of what I hate about modern magic limited it's so random and i think it's done with the intent that this will make really good stories remember that time that somebody flipped three 11 11s off the top wow that was a heck of a story but it was also a crappy game of magic or remember the times except you won't remember the times because people remember the good times remember the time that you flipped three lands and put three lands onto the battlefield on turn nine Okay. Yeah, so Auspicious Starix is just so inconsistent, but you you just have to play it anyways because A, the 6-6 six, six for 5 is very under-costed, and B, the chance that you might flip a bunch of very relevant non-land permanents is, uh, is, is very big. The first mutate on this could just end the game. The second mutate is going to be such a crazy amount of value unless you hit land-land, which still isn't horrible, but this late in the game I do think is not very good at all. Um, yeah, th this card this card scares me. I don't like randomness like this. I like consistent magic, and this is the enemy of consistent magic. That said, it, it still has to be treated as a good card because of those times that it's going to be absolutely nutty. So I think this is like a B, maybe even a B plus. It's just, it's nutty, except for the times you hit land land aura that doesn't do anything or something like that so yeah let's go with a b plus for auspicious starix i'm going to play this quite highly because i want to be the one who lucks out all the time but we all know how my luck usually goes up next is Barrier Breach. Barrier Breach is two and a green for an instant at uncommon. Exile up to three target enchantments, cycling for two. Yeah, eh, this is constructed, I assume. This is obviously the enchantment hate following the enchantment set. This set does have 14 enchantments under rare, but it's not like your opponent's going to have multiples of them, so it's still probably just exile one 
target enchantment most of the time and I, I don't know if it's really that big of a payoff what am i excited to 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 exile a pacifism a capture sphere and at that point i don't really care about most of the other enchantments i don't care about their weapon the mize of the monsters or their reptilian reflection or their ominous seas and until of course i do care about them so yeah this is like sideboard only and even then i don't think it's amazing cycling is nice but i don't think this one is one that you main deck uh the the one the red one that kills flyers flyers are way more common than enchantments are so leave this in your sideboard but you know if your opponent has like three pacifisms or something side this in could be really good so d plus leave it in the side up next is bristling boar bristling boar is three and a green for a creature boar at common it's a four three bullet bristling boar can't be blocked by more than one creature medium pig is back uh probably still fine vanilla wise or french vanilla wise and if you mutate onto it its ability actually could be very handy if you mutate something bigger if you mutate something with a, a nice effect like the sea dasher octopus that draws on damage etc could be a decent mutate platform i think it's a c plus uh based on its own stats and mutate just makes it a bit better up next is charge of the forever beast charge of the forever beast is two and a green for a sorcery at uncommon as an additional cost to cast this spell reveal a creature card from your hand charge of the forever beast deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the revealed cards power so it's like a bite spell uh bite is what we call fight spells that are one-sided except the creature doesn't need to be on the battlefield that sounds really good except the creature can't be on the battlefield the creature must be in your hand i think it's very easy to read that as an upside and it's actually i think a little bit more likely to be a bit of a downside top decking this card is going to be one of the worst things that you could ever do because it's going to be dead if you are hellbent until you finally draw a creature at which point you're gonna need to cast this first before you can put that creature down you better hope that you're able to double spell in that turn um so yeah i think this card is fine i think this card is fine i think it's going to kill creatures enough of the time you know you're going to be able to play this on three reveal your four drop or your five drop and kill something that might not be the most impactful in the game but that you want to Dead, but i think this card is much worse than it initially reads i think it is still fine i think it's still around like the c plus maybe the b minus range but i really do want to keep it at the c plus because i want to hit home that this card is as much downside as it is upside so let's go with the c plus for charge of the forever beast up next is Colossification. Colossification is five green green for an enchantment aura at rare enchant creature. When in when Colossification enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. I think people are going to go gaga over this card and think it's amazing. And I don't think it actually is. Uh, seven mana is a ludicrous amount to put into this. You have to do it into uh, your opponent not having mana available because if they can uh counter this or kill this or kill this in response or on tap on their turn because they get a turn to on tap and top deck removal if they can in any way interact with this creature you just spent seven mana plus a card which is a ludicrous amount of resources to have just thrown away and if this is not going on a creature with trample or flying um i, I guess menace kind of but obviously you want it on a trampler or a flyer then this is just getting jump blocked every single turn remember keyword big you know uh, just a big dumb creature it doesn't matter if it's a 2020 or a 732 732 if it doesn't have trampler flying it's just getting chump blocked every single turn you need to get through with this you need to get through with it immediately and you can't because it comes in tapped i think this card's actually a bit of a trap i'm gonna lose to it i'm 100 percent gonna lose to it i think it's a bit of a trap i I don't know the actual grade to give to this card because when it wins the game, it's an A plus, but I think a lot of the times it's like a C minus, a D, like a D plus maybe. I, I'm going to have to see how this card plays out. I think people are going to overrate this way, 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 way too much. Let's go D plus on classification. Up next is Essence Symbiote. Essence Symbiote is one and a green for a creature beast. I don't even know what that is. It's a, a common 2-2. Two -two. Whenever a creature you control mutates, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and you gain two life. This seems like a pretty good payoff, although unlike the Polywog Symbiote, it doesn't help you play the mutate creatures. It doesn't give you that, uh, that, that cost reduction. 
Also unlike Polywog Symbiote, because why wouldn't they make this mini cycle not actually symmetrical? This doesn't trigger when you play a creature with Mutate, this triggers when a creature mutates. Polywog Symbiote triggers when you play a creature with Mutate, regardless of if you mutate it or not. I hate this set from a design perspective. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Anyways, this seems like a fine uh, payoff, just maybe not quite as good as Polywog Symbiote. An extra plus one, plus one counter on that mutating creature is great, and two life is a fine bonus on top of things. It's a two, two for two, so you're not even overpaying for it, but I do think this caps out at around a C plus if you're in a mutate heavy deck. If you're not in a mutate heavy deck, you probably don't put this in. Up next is Excavation Mole. Excavation Mole is two and a green for a creature mole at common. It's a 3-3 trample. When Excavation Mole enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Hey, look, another 3-3 three, three for three with text at common. I, this set is so powerfully pushed. I really hope this is a peak that we're at. I hope we come down from this peak and that this isn't the new the new norm for magic. Thankfully, we have a core set coming up next, I guess. Um, yeah, this is a 3-3 trample for three. That's fantastic. And in green, putting three cards into your graveyard is an upside. That is not a downside. It's actually basically never a downside. But here, it's actually kind of an upside. This card just seems totally fine in every green deck. And if you happen to be green black, this card is actively just very solid. It's around a C plus in all of the decks. I don't think it creeps up to a B minus in the green black deck. But yeah, this card's just very, very, very well costed. Uh, C plus for excavation mole. Having trample, it's also a good mutate platform. Up next is Exuberant Wolf Bear. Exuberant Wolf Bear is three and a green for a creature Wolf Bear at Uncommon. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever Exuberant Wolf Bear attacks, you may change the base power and toughness of target human you control to Exuberant Wolf Bear's power and toughness until end of turn. Exuberant Wolf Bear is hard to say. So this turns, uh, assuming you're in green-white, I would assume, I guess green-black's a possibility, this turns your little 1-1 one, one humans into 4-4 four, four humans but only one, so it doesn't really help a go wide human deck, so I wouldn't go nuts on that. I think this is probably just a totally fine include because it's a 4-4 four, for four, 4 period in every green deck, and if you happen to be in green, white, or green, black, which are most likely to have the most humans, you've got a few extra 4-4s four, kicking around that maybe wouldn't otherwise be 4-4s. Four, I don't think it's a crazy super bomby card at all. It requires other cards to make it actually function as more than what's you know the in the stats line, but I think it is a C plus nonetheless. C plus for exuberant wolf bear. Up next is Fertilid. Fertilid is two and a green for a creature elemental at common. It's a zero zero, but it does enter the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. And you can pay one and a green and remove a plus one plus one counter from Fertilid. Target player searches their library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield tap, then shovels their library. This has been reprinted a lot, but not in limited sets that I've played. It's much uh, more common in Arch Enemy and Commander and Dual Decks and Plane Chase and uh, Battle Bond and Morning Tide, both sets that I have not drafted before. Fertilid seems uh, like fantastic fixing. It's three mana for a 2-2, two -two, which isn't the best, but one green later to get a land and then again? That's not too bad. I, I don't think I'd play this just to ramp, just because you're looking to, you know, turn four plus to even begin to start to ramp, which is late. You want to ramp on turn one, turn two, turn three. Turn four is getting costly. Um, but if you're playing three plus colors, why not? The fixing is going to be well worth it. And you're, you're semi rewarded for playing multiple colors in this format. With Fertilid and the Fox that we'll talk about in a couple of days and, and some other cards, I think four and five color decks are going to uh, uh, kind of be running around pretty rampant again in this set, especially on MTGO where that seems to be a trend that people love. And with a small enough player base, the entire format ends up trending to like that usually. And I think Fertilid's gonna be uh, uh, something that does that. I think it's a C plus. It obviously depends on your deck. Like I said, I don't really wanna play this to ramp if I'm just in you know base green, black or something. But if I'm splashing, if I'm three colors, four colors, five colors, I certainly want these for sure. So C plus if you need them. Up next is Fly Catcher Giraffid. Fly Catcher Giraffid is four and a green. I guess the id is lizard. It's a creature antelope lizard at common. It's a 3-5 and flycatcher giraffid enters the battlefield with your choice of a vigilance counter or a reach counter. I don't really care about either of those. This is a mammoth spider if you're giving it reach and if you're giving it vigilance, it's a thing that exists, I guess. 
This card's not very exciting. At five mana, I don't think it's really the mutate platform that you're looking for. I think your mutate platforms need to be one drops, two drops, three drops. Um, yeah, this card just seems like filler. It seems almost sideboardy if your opponent's playing a lot of flyers. So I think I'd actually keep this in the sideboard a lot so we can give it a D plus grade. Maybe a C minus just because I'm not gonna feel bad playing the first one. Up next is Fully Grown. Fully Grown is two and a green for an instant at common target creature. Gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Put a trample counter on it. It's giant growth for three times the cost, but it gets trample, which is scary, and it keeps trample, which is even scarier. Um, this is going to be a big game. A non-zero number of games will just end when this is cast the first time at instant speed, nonetheless. You have to remember that this exists, but trample makes it so that even if you do know it exists, you'll still probably lose on like the next turn or even that turn because your opponent can still just decide to cast this on whatever is going to get the most trampled damage through. Um, yeah, very scary. At the end of the day, it is still just a combat trick. You, you don't want to load up on these. You still need to know that you're a deck that's going to take advantage of it. So I think it is just a C, but I think this is a pretty good combat trick in this format. Uh, instant speed trample out of nowhere is very scary and trample sticking around is also kind of scary. Up next is Gem Razor. Gem Razor is three and a green for a creature beast at rare. It's a four four with reach and trample. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Mutate for one green green. This is a four four reach trample for four. Uh, I don't think you're really going out of your way to mutate this. Uh, there, there, there are artifacts in the set. There are enchantments. I don't think you are super desperate to be getting rid of them if you find yourself in a situation where your opponent has pacifism you have this why not pay one green green kill blow up that pacifism and you know use this as a mutate but i think this is really just a four four for four with reach and trample which is fine but i think it is a c plus at best i, I don't really think we're going up to a, a b minus on this this is definitely one of the rares that i don't really want to see I, i'm gonna play it but i don't want this to be my rare Honestly, I, I don't even know why this isn't an uncommon. Up next, we have Glowstone Recluse. Glowstone Recluse is two and a green for a creature spider on common. It's a two, three with reach. Whenever this creature mutates, put two plus one plus one counters on it. Mutate for three and a green. Another uh, more expensive mutator here. So a two, three for three with reach is okay. We've played that. I can't remember what version of spider that was, but we have played that before and it's been okay. And then if we do mutate this, perhaps even playing it as a four drop, which typically would be a giant spider, we instead get a mammoth spider for four plus whatever other rules text was on there. Or perhaps we mutate this under a 4-4 and that 4-4 becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, yeah, this seems like a totally solid card. I think every mutate deck is going to love to have copies of these, probably as many as they'll play. I think it's just totally fine. I think we can put this at like a C plus it might just be a B minus just because if you do have, you know, let's say you have a gem razor, you jam this on your gem razor and you've got a six, six and maybe you get to destroy an artifact or enchantment. So let's put this at a B minus. I think it's very good in those mutate decks. If you're not mutating onto this multiple times, then I think you do treat this just as basically a mammoth spider, or I guess no, because you can always put it under the creature. So it, it, it's, also potentially a plus two plus two reach aura man mutate is so friggin hard to think about and actually evaluate and rate i think the card's fine uh and this is why i don't like the grades i don't know if it's a c plus or a b minus or if it matters on deck blah 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 we'll go with a b minus for glowstone recluse you know where to play it when to play it how it works we've talked about that so let's move on up next is greater sandworm this is a reprint from Amonkhet. It's five green green for a creature worm at common. It's a seven seven that can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So it can't be chumped blocked by the chumpiest chumps. It has to be chump blocked by slightly bigger chumps. And you can cycle it for two, which was a very common thing to do in that format because I mean, in that format, you were never getting to seven because that format was ludicrously fast. This format looks as though it could be slower, but I'm not sold. I'm not sold on that yet. I think there's the possibility, but I think there's a lot of aggro that could happen. I think if your plan is to get to seven drops, you might just get run over or flown over or trampled over. So we'll see how it goes. Greater Sandworm is probably just going to be okay. You'll put it in your deck. If you happen to end up at seven mana, cool. You've got a seven, seven that's hard to block. And if you don't, you pay two and you cycle it. It's a C, not much more than a C. 
Up next is Honey Mammoth. Honey Mammoth is four green green for a creature elephant at common. It's a six six. When Honey Mammoth enters the battlefield, you gain four life. Wow, does this card look like trash compared to most other cards in the set. It's basically a vanilla six six for six. That's it. No trample, nothing else. You gain four life. This is a C minus. This is a card that you are going to actively look to not play. It really stands out like a sore thumb. It just looks so not good compared to everything else. Yeah, C minus for Honey Mammoth. Up next is Hornbash Mentor. Hornbash Mentor is our last of the mentors. Two and a green for a creature human warrior at Uncommon is a 3 3 when it ETBs. Put a trample counter on target non human creature. You're in green, you're going to have non human creatures. Pay two and a green, tap, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature with you control with trample, which is terrifying. I don't know if it's scarier to put the counters on tramplers or flyers probably flyers there's just more flying they are more unblockable than the trample damage coming through but i think this might be the second favorite of the mentors for me just seems really good it's totally well costed it's a three three for three on like the one three for three that we had or the did we have a two three i think at one point um yeah this card seems really good i think it's just like a solid b it might just be a solid b because it's a totally fine creature by itself like this is a very strong solid C as a 3-3 three, three for 3. 3-3s three, 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 for 3 have been very good, although as creatures have creeped up in power over the past couple of years, they have gotten pushed back a little bit. And then just the fact that we can, instead of attacking with this, use it as a defensive blocker and pump up all of our tramplers seems very scary. So I'm going to go with a B for Horn Bash Mentor. Up next is Humble Naturalist, not Naturist, Naturalist. Humble Naturalist is one in a green for a creature human druid at common. It's a 1-3. Tap, add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. Oh no, I can only cast my creature spells. This card's very solid. If you are a creature heavy deck, I don't know what green deck would not want this card. It's going to be very, very handy as a ramper. It's two mana. That's where you want your ramp, ideally at one, but we'll take two. It's going to block some smallish things early on. It's going to help you splash for creatures only. Remember, don't try splashing ultimatums with the, with this thing. Um, but yeah, this seems like a great card in weak packs. This would be my first pick. It's a super weak first pick, but I would do it. Uh, B minus for Humble Naturalist. I like it quite a bit. Up next is Ivy Elemental. Ivy Elemental is X in a green for a creature elemental at uncommon. It's a zero, zero, but it does, of course, enter with X plus one plus one counters on it. So it just always fails the vanilla test. It's always one behind. It's a one, one for two and a two, two for three and a three, three for four, three, three for four. And that's mediocre. That's mediocre. I would not play any of those cards. Now, the fact that it scales at least means that it's not you know, a 1-1 one, one for 2 on turn 9. It'll be however much mana I can pay, and boy, I hope it's not a 1-1 one, one for 2 on turn 9. I got super mana screwed there. But the interesting thing is that this could be a mutate platform, because if you do cast it for, let's say, 4, and you get a 3-3, three, three, you actually don't have a 3-3. Three, three. You have a 0-0 zero, zero with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So if you mutate a 4-4 four, four on top of it, it's actually a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's a really interesting play there. The problem is, I, as I've talked about, I think you want your mutate platforms to be one drops, two drops, three drops. You want them to come down very early so that you can mutate on them as soon as possible. You don't want a mutate creature that you cast on uh, or a mutate platform that you cast on turn five or six or seven because you should have already blown all of your uh, mutates by that point in time. They, they should be on the battlefield. They should be done. So I don't know exactly how this is going to work out. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. It looks mediocre at first. I think the mutate platform is an interesting idea. I still don't think it makes it that much better, but the versatility of perhaps if you do draw this late, it may not be your mutate platform, but it might just be a 6-6 six, six is interesting. So I think this is probably going to work out to be like a C plus perhaps if you do have an amount of mutate i wouldn't go any higher than c plus and i don't think i'd go any lower either so let's go c plus on ivy elemental it's going to be an interesting card for sure
Up next is Kogla the Titan Ape. Kogla the Titan Ape is three green 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 for a legendary creature ape at rare. It's a seven six. When it ETBs, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Whenever it attacks, you destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Pay one and a green return target human you control to its owner's hand. Kogla gains indestructible until end of turn. I was confused about this. I understand that it's the human that the King Kong is protecting, but is my hand supposed to be the ape's hand? Why am I getting the human back and it's getting indestructible? I don't get it. Um, but yeah, this card's just great. If you are heavy green, if you can definitely justify green, green, green in the mana cost, this is a uh, uh, under-costed 7-6 six for 6 that's going to kill a creature. And uh, one in a green to give it indestructible means it's going to be pretty terrifying. This card just seems fantastic. It's a, it's a first pick, I think. You're going to have to go a little bit heavier into green, or at least make sure you pick up a whole lot of fixing to make that a little bit easier. But it's a fantastic solid A, I think, for Kogla the Titan Ape. Up next is Lead the Stampede. Lead the Stampede is two and a green for a sorcery at Uncommon. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So I've never actually played this card. I've not played Mirrodin, and I believe it was in another set, possibly a conspiracy, I think. Um, so I've not played this card, so I don't actually know how it uh, goes off in Limited. I know, obviously, it's an Elves uh, All-Star in Constructed, but in Limited, it seems like it's got an extremely good chance of being the Green Divination. At worst, obviously, at worst is you whiff and waste a card in mana, um, and that's going to suck quite a bit. But I think it's going to be relatively hard to whiff in the average creature-dense green deck, um, so it's probably just a Green Divination, which seems totally fine, I think think. So this is probably around like a C plus B minus, assuming you are relatively creature dense. Um, if you're not creature dense for some reason, then you're going to knock this down a little bit. But I think it's probably a C plus B minus. I think you'll be happy to play these probably in multiples in almost all green decks. That said, it's non-common, so odds are there's less than one in your draft pod. Up next is Migration Path. Migration Path is three and a green for a sorcery at Uncommon. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library, cycling to Here's yet another bit of mana fixing. That's why I think this is actually going to be kind of a four color, even five color set in MTGO at least. And of course you can pull it off in paper as well. Arena is trickier because the Arena Bots rare draft like it's going out of style and part of the big payoff of five color decks is you get all the rares that your play that your uh, uh, drafters pass to you yes they don't pass many but they do pass some especially in pack three and you just gobble all of them up on arena that just doesn't happen so this will be great in those three color four color five color decks for sure uh, and and if you find yourself in the late game you've already found all your colors you get to cycle this away and turn it into a different card instead. Um, if you're a standard two color deck, I don't think you play this unless you're going for really big casting cost creatures. Because again, ramping on four just is not really the plan that you should be doing. But if you're fixing this card, it's going to be an absolute necessity. Uh, but I, I, I would push this up to a B minus to tell you just how much of a necessity this card is if you are looking to go with a greedier mana base. Um, but outside of that, it's much more like a C minus card that you don't really want in a two color deck up next is migratory great horn migratory great horn is three and a green for a creature beast at common it's a three four whenever this creature mutates search your library for a basic land card put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle your library the mutate cost is two and a green hey look even more fixing i'll tell you i'm gonna get over my uh, my greedy mana base phobia here real quick and uh, just immediately jump into four or five colors if I can and migratory great horns going to help me with that if I fail and don't get to mutate this I get a three four for four which is not the worst thing in the world but if I do mutate it getting to fix my mana ramp my mana etc on turn three potentially at the earliest which is where you are happy to ramp this seems just totally fine I think it's an extremely strong C plus I don't think it goes into the B range at all but I think it can be a C++. C++ for Migratory Great Horn. Up next is Monstrous Step. Monstrous Step is four and a green for a sorcery at Uncommon. 
And it says target creature gets plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. Up to one target creature blocks it this turn if able. Cycling for two. Sorcery speed plus seven, plus seven is just not remotely as good as you think it is. Now, of course, sometimes your opponent has just one creature. It can't block and you win because your other creatures are getting through unblocked. But that's not typically how it's going to happen. Now, it does sort of function, I guess, like a fight spell because you are going to force that creature to take the combat damage it is going to die barring combat tricks um, pouncing shore sharks or other things like that but I think this definitely needs to be paired with trample or something or flying even and even then you're putting so much mana into this to get blown out by instant speed removal um, which exists in most of the colors um, yeah not something I want to play I think this is a D plus I just don't ever really see myself playing this card ever up next is Moscow Goriak. Moscow Goriak is two and a green for a creature beast at common. It's a two four with vigilance, and that is it. Not really interested. It's a French vanilla creature, so it's like a C minus. Um, I don't think I want to mutate onto this. I, I want my mutates to be one, two, and threes. So this is already the top end of where I want my mutate platform to be. And just vigilance is not really that exciting and there's not many mutate creatures that i'm super excited about turning into a two four so i don't think this really has much of a place i think it's a c minus i think it's extreme filler that you should only play if you are desperate up next is mythos of brokos mythos of brokos is two green green for a sorcery at rare if blue black was spent to cast this spell search your library for a card put that card into your graveyard then shuffle your library if you didn't do that or if you did do that, in addition to that, return up the two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So in a mono green deck or a green white or green red deck, this is two green green, return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. I'm not super excited by that. I need my regrowth abilities to have creatures attached or be instant speed or be cheap, and this is none of those things. Now, if I am in full Sultai and I'm paying blue, black, green, green, I get to tutor for the card, essentially, and then I get another card as well. I'm still not excited by that because I also don't play tutors in limited, certainly not four mana sorcery speed in three different colors. So I think this is just an F. I think Mythos of Brokos is uh, not all that Brokos. So F for Mythos of Brokos. Up next is Plummet with Again, weird art. So Seb McKinnon did all the art for the Mythos, and it's very different than magic art, but we accept that from Seb McKinnon. It looks like they've given some other artists some free reign. And this art is weird. Plummet for one and a green at instant speed at common. Destroy target creature with flying. We know Plummet. We've seen it dozens of times at this point. I, I, I would take a guess, and I'll go check this in a split second. I would take a guess we've seen Plummet printed. 27 times let's go check 18 that was close 18 um yeah plummet is a sideboard only card there's no cycling attached to it there is no excuse for putting this into your main deck there is a little bit more flying than is average but not enough for you to main deck a plummet keep it in the sideboard and when it comes in from the sideboard it's going to be amazing d plus plus up next is Ram Through. I wonder what this does. Ram Through is one and a green for an instant at common. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. Not exactly what I thought. I thought it was going to be a combat trick. So this is what I was looking for. When we were talking about there was a fight spell. Was it in green? It might have been in red. This is a really good bite spell because it is instant speed. Instant speed is huge for things things like this and it's not a fight spell it's a bite spell so your creature's not dying which is huge your 3-3 can kill their 3-3 the trample thing is cute I don't know if it will actually be all that impactful all that often but this looks to me like the best green common I can't think of anything that would even begin to compete with this as the best green common in the entire set uh, seems very very good um, I think it's a relatively high pick I think you do pick unconditional removal that doesn't require a creature to exist first of course but i think this is a solid b for ram through
Up next is Sudden Spinnerets. Sudden Spinnerets is a single green mana for instant at common. Target creature gets plus one plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it, untap it. This is our instant speed combat reach trick that we get every couple of sets or so. This one's a little bit better in that A, it's ludicrously cheap at a single mana. We don't typically see that. Plus one plus three means it's going to live and hopefully kill something. And the reach counter means it permanently turns into a spider as this goat thing appears to have done already. And you get to untap it as you typically do with these spells. Seems like a totally fine combat trick, but it's still a combat trick nonetheless. It's uh, also a defensive combat trick in its best use, which is not my favorite thing. It's a C minus. I'm not really gunning to put this in my deck, but I'll be okay if I uh, have a spot for it. Up next is Survivor's Bond. Survivor's Bond is one in a green for a sorcery at common. Choose one or both. Return target human creature card from your graveyard to your hand or and return target non-human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is like that black pirate uh, uh, raised dead spell that I really liked in Ixalan where you, if, you're, if you had the right creature types, you got to return two creatures for really cheap. This is in green. For some reason, I mean, I know green regrows creatures, but this is very much a black card. Um, but yeah, this is going to hopefully draw you to this is like another green divination, but it's a green divination that obviously draws very explicit things and requires a specific situation to have happen. This is going to depend entirely on your breakdown between humans and non-humans. And honestly, all of these human non-human cards that get better if and only if you have one of each type or, or multiples of each type worry me a little bit. Um, I, I think it's going to take specific deck building and then even then it's going to take specific things to happen for you to get the full value out of this. So I'm a bit hesitant about this. Um, I think it's going to be fine. I think it's not the worst card if you're only getting one creature back, but you're definitely going to want to be getting two. So I'm going to put it at like a C. I don't think it's much better than that. But when you do get the full value, it's going to feel pretty decent. So a C for Survivor's Bond. Up next is Thwart the Enemy. Thwart the Enemy is two and a green for an instant at common. Prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. It is a one-sided fog. Now, one-sided fogs are, of course, better because you attack in with your team. Your opponent makes some blocks where they're going to kill some of your stuff, and they'll do some trades. They guess you cast this. The trades happen, except they don't happen. Their traders actually became chumpers, and the rest of your creatures just live. But there's a problem there. You tapped out for your big alpha strike and they are not tapped out and you might have problems coming back. This at the end of the day is still a fog. It is still very hard to really take advantage of it properly and I'm just never going to play it. One sided fogs are absolutely better than fogs, which are some of the worst cards ever, but not by much. I'm still at like a D minus for thwart the enemy. I don't want to play it. Up next is Titanoth Rex. Titanoth Rex is seven green green for a creature dinosaur beast at Uncommon. It's, it's the 11-11 trample that I've been mentioning a lot. Cycling for one and a green. When you cycle it, put a trample on put trample, trample counter on target creature you control. This one is terrifying because as we've seen, green has cards that will put creatures from the top of your library into play, like the Auspicious Starix, and Green Black specifically has a bunch of of reanimation spells and boy if i'm concerned about spending five mana on a reanimation spell i'm not concerned when it's an 11 11 trample coming back and how is this 11 11 trample getting to the graveyard because i'm cycling it i'm probably never or almost never going to cast this for its actual casting cost this is a reanimator target and giving something else that's big trample is going to be really good on my way to reanimating this this is I would say almost a black green gold card. I don't know how much you want to play this in the other color combinations, but in black green, I think it's going to be pretty decent. It's around like a C plus still, I think, because you, you still have to have things go right. You still have to draw this. You still have to cycle it. Then you have to draw or already have had the, uh, the reanimation spell for this to come into play. And then your opponent has to not just remove it. And there's a lot of removal in the set, remember. So we'll see how it plays out. I think it can be very scary in that deck. I think it's less scary in the other decks just because nine mana is a pipe dream, even in the slowest of sets. So we'll see how it plays out, but let's go with a C plus for Titanoth Rex. And boy, the times where this gets flipped off of an auspicious Starix or something, it's gonna suck. 
Our second last card is our second Planeswalker, Vivian Monsters Advocate. Vivian Monsters Advocate is three green green for legendary Planeswalker Vivian at Mythic. She starts with three loyalty, really whiffing on the Planeswalker vanilla test here, but she has static abilities. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library, so she's like a Vizier of the Menagerie. Plus one, create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Put your choice of a Vigilance counter, Reach counter, or Trample counter on it. I think Trample is probably the best, but Reach and Vigilance have their place. Minus two, so she can do this right away. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Like I said, there's just so many cards where we're not even casting magic cards anymore. We're just jamming them straight onto the battlefield and Vivian is certainly one of them. Vivian looks really good. She is a solid five mana planeswalker. She defends herself, which is fantastic. That three three is definitely going to do some work. She can cast creatures off the top of your library, which is great. You get to see what's coming up um, and, and it's not even reveal. Keep that in mind. This is not, um, you know, a, a courser of crew fix or whatever. This is you look at your top of your library. Um, so yeah, uh, Vivian Monsters Advocate looks really good. I think she's a, a slam dunk planeswalker. I think we can jump her right into the A A range. Am I going to go A plus? I think I might be go. I think I might go A plus. Five mana defends herself. Very relevant static ability. Minus two potentially getting you know, arguably huge things. If she's a five drop and you follow this up with a six drop and you go and you grab yourself another free five drop of whatever you want out of your deck is wild. Yeah, I think Vivian's an A+. I think she's fantastic. She's always the first pick in every pack she'll be in. A+, for Vivian Monsters Advocate. Our final green card for today is not going to take much conversation. It's Wilt. It's one in a green for an instant, a common destroy target artifact or enchantment, cycling for two. We thought Return to Nature said, uh, screw you, Naturalize. Well, Naturalize has been bested by another card that is just flat out better than it. This is Naturalize plus Cycling, and it's a card that you can put in your main deck if you need a slot. We've talked about this a lot because Cycling is relevant if you don't have a viable target, and then you can side it out if need be in the next game. But when you do have those targets, it's going to feel pretty good. So this is like a C minus, I guess, is where we should rate these. They're not D pluses because they're not coming into the sideboard. They are sitting in your main if you have a spot. So C minus for Wilt. So that's going to wrap it up for the green set review. Green looks big and stompy and rampy and fixy. I think I'm going to play a lot of green because I'm going to really want to try to get into those three, four, five color decks. And uh, green is going to be the way that you do that for sure. Let me know what you're excited about in green, what you're planning on playing, what combos you want to do with green. I think green black is going to be really good for all the reanimation. Let me know whatever you want to let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can always find me over on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. Twitch on Wednesday, I will be streaming Akoria, Lair of Behemoths, Sealed, and Draft on Arena all day. Thanks to Wizards for inviting me to the early access event and giving me that stocked account. So you can go check that out over there starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. As always, you can find me over at patreon.com slash If you want to help out uh, financially that way, it is super helpful. It absolutely 100% keeps the channel going. You get to join the Patreon where we have all kinds of discussions and rants and etc. Um, you get to work your way towards getting a Mana Leak playmat. You're in the drawing for the crack packs each Tuesday uh, and you help me out and that would be awesome. As always, the easiest, quickest way to help out is to like, to share, and subscribe. But if you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all tomorrow for the first half of the rest of the cards.